time trial on the Waymaker Riri was designed to seed everyone for the start of racing on the Waimea tomorrow. It almost worked, with NZ1 John Derry setting the opening pace around the four kilometre loop track. No problem for A-class Justin Hill in NZ2. Finding a shortcut and the time advantage the gas turbines would miss. That save and the quicker cornering around the boys would give Piston Power the quickest time of the day. 9 minutes 38 seconds, 4 seconds quicker than Derry. As NZ3, the current CX champ Dave Robinson was third away and secured fifth fastest time behind two other turbines. It was Southland's Roger Preston who split the fastest boats, home just one second quicker than John Derry on 9 minutes 41 seconds. Finally, Tom Kelly has Golden Homes back on the water after a hiatus resolving a gearbox issue. He couldn't match the other two turbines, but was pleased to make the bottom after cutting a corner at the top marker. Um, yeah, just sort of, but in a way, but I, and yeah, it didn't quite come round. Yeah. It's harder than it looks from the uh, chopper, I'd say. One of those things, a silly mistake, trying to get a little bit quicker, a little bit quicker, when really, you know, they're, they're the big ones that hurt, so yeah. uh, we're lucky here. At least Kelly made the finish. In a rare moment, Mike Pooley messed up the bottom boy turning in too early. By the time he realised it was too late and he and Kevin Hyde ground to a halt. A, a mistake, that's all. And hopefully it's the last one for this marathon. That's my fault, I went the wrong way. As far as we're aware, we're, we'll be seated down the field and we lose, we lose time. We get penalised for not finishing. So, I oh know, we're back on the horse tomorrow. And there's still a thousand case to go, so we've just failed the first 20. So, we're looking forward to the next thousand. At the other end of the field, rookie Jan Case Kirpenstein hesitated too long on the top turnaround, ending up high and dry. Time for the Hamilton Jet patrol boats and their pushing power to free the stranded FX entry. Richie Foster was 14 seconds behind Dave Robinson, but that was enough to secure second in CX. Another CX, Andrew Scott, was a further 19 seconds back, and he'll no doubt be the first target for what will be a hard-charging Mike Pooley tomorrow on the y -Hour, as he looks to find his rightful place further up the order. The Deals Racing Team completed the course in 11 minutes 19. It's early days for Riley Smith and securing a midfield start for the morning, especially behind the much faster gas turbine, will provide some clear river and hopefully advantage. On 11.58 is Craig Robinson in Radioactive. But only one second behind him is Wayne Boys, aka Bricky. The self confessed man channel hunter was doing just that, taking at least one that few others dare. Bricky will have to watch though. Greg Wilson is only two seconds shy in the smaller powered FX entry. But both he and Jan Case have been grouped with Justin Hill in A class to ensure a qualifying category for all three drivers. Wilson's job will be to keep Hill honest. One major slip-up and the A-Class win could go to an FX-ended racer. Grant Perry finally has found speed in his hunting and fishing CX entry. It showed on the leaderboard as quicker than Justin Hill, which would have worked had he not shortened up the course in the process. Well, we thought we were doing perfect. We didn't realise they were leaking the course on us. <laughs> nah, no, nah, I don't know. Just sitting around too long and forgot where to go, I think. But we thought we were right, but yeah, no, we weren't, obviously. <laughs> so, some early highs and some early lows, showcasing the best and worst of river racing. If the weather plays ball like today, we're in for a fantastic week of racing. Mind you, teams converge on the West Coast tomorrow night, and as every racer knows, that can be a very curved ball. It was Mike Pooley who would make the first move on day two of the marathon. 
a river of many faces, the Waiau provides some of the most challenging racing in New Zealand. But for Pooley, it was also about regaining the lost ground from yesterday. The three CX boats starting at minute intervals in front of him were watching over their shoulders as his gas turbine cut the shortest track up the river. Andrew Scott was first to give racing room. Soon it was Richie Foster's turn. Finally, the quickest CX, Dave Robinson, made room as well. Mind you, Robinson did respond with a shortcut of his own to stay in touch for a moment or two longer. Mike Pooley completed the 80k run to Hamner in 34 minutes and 9 seconds. But for a second day in a row, Roger Preston spoiled the turbine party. a mere one second to clinch quickest time upstream. But it wasn't the walk in the park. It's really hard work. It was sweating away there. It was just all go. At, at pleasure boating speed, it seemed quite you know, easy, but at race speed, that was hard work. Our morning race leader, A-class Justin Hill, succumbed to the gas turbine dominance. But still, he was in front of John Deering. the new turbine and NZ1 had the horsepower, something in the recent hull tweaks and pump changes wasn't translating to improved times. The fourth turbine never left the trailer. The normally reliable starter in Golden Homes failed on startup, so Tom Kelly was expediting one out of Queenstown to get back in the race. hazard in the form of a tree across the river proved little problem for most. Well, except Andrew Scott, who bent a wing to the delight of those watching. Yeah, we might have lost a wing there at one point, but yeah. <laughs> just uh, clipped a wee stem that was sticking off it that looked like it had just bent over, but it didn't. <laughs> Leg three, downstream from Hamner, was uneventful despite concerns over a couple of tricky, hard to see corners. There's one corner there in particular that was on everyone's minds, I think, but it was just a case of going to slide the leisure boat almost just to get, get it round it and, and carry on. The tide was turning. Mike Pooley was in the groove, delivering his first leg win by 15 seconds. He did the same on the final upstream leg, but would still finish the day in second after a strong performance from Roger Preston, who has another 30 up his sleeve. Mind you, he nearly needed that and more after this moment in the afternoon. The Deals Racing Boys were happy to have an uneventful day, but did wish they were further up the leaderboard. Somehow the CX competition is stealing a march as they struggle to stay in touch with the top three. But finishing the YO in one piece at this early stage is a good prize nonetheless. That's a prize that eluded Craig Robinson and forced him and son Liam into late afternoon repairs. Yeah, Liam just sort of thought that we were, um, we'd come, when we come down, we'd go up against the trees a bit more. And um, yeah, so he, he pointed me up this channel and I thought it was one too far over and we just shot round and there was a, just a, a proverbial tree in the road. <laughs> Then there's Wayne Boys, so keen to start and finish every leg of this marathon, out with a drop valve in the engine. Notice the different bit of a noise that drops the cylinder. Yeah, we sort of were just hoping, and then um, 
Yeah, no, it started, uh, we come through the goods. We, we still got a, got a time, that was our aim to try and do it. Somehow, even running on seven cylinders, he still lived up to his reputation. Ricky hopes to be back for day three with a fresh engine in the back and more enthusiasm to have fun in the Golden Homes New Zealand Marathon, set for a start on the West Coast. He promised to return and delivered. Wayne Boys was back with a borrowed engine thanks to the A-Class Aftershock Racing Team. Their CX engine was shoehorned overnight in Darfield and 726 was driven over the coast straight to the start line in Greymouth. Ross and Dave headed over to uh, over to Darfield. One of my workers shot into town to get the motor and then, um, you know, they worked till 1.30 this morning and then we were back up at 5, 4.30, back on the road to get over to the coast. So. Um, yeah, I owe them a hell of a lot. For Bricky, the good news would be a start and finish of four legs for day three to set up what should hopefully be an incident-free remainder of his marathon. Good luck with that, Bricky. Also back, Golden Homes, complete with a special wire required to help the starter engage should it fail. The tussle at the top amongst the other gas turbines would be interesting. Mike Pooley just 30 seconds behind race leader Roger Preston. No, we'll just cruise up today and back again. It's no, you're not going to win the marathon today, I'm afraid. Pooley did cruise upstream, giving 40 seconds to Preston. But it was raining and he wasn't taking chances on the final section of river he wasn't familiar with. It would be the last time though, pulling 30 back out of Preston downstream. Yeah, I think we've probably narrowed that down to probably neck and neck now. Well, um, no, much, we... much easier if you're chasing, isn't it? So you, you've got a gauge on how fast you're going. Yeah, I think that's right. Like if you see a rooster tail in front, you tend to push a wee bit harder than normal. Um, but the conditions were pretty difficult up the top. We couldn't really see where we were going, but I think he pulled probably 30 seconds out of us downstream. On the afternoon repeat legs, Mike Pooley would turn up the week. 45, then 30 seconds quicker on the respective afternoon legs to take the outright lead. Run down, the rain went away and we gave it a bit of jandle, so it's good. John Derry took advantage of the long stretches to haul in Justin Hill. Yeah, look, it was a pretty fast river, probably suited us more than Justin, but look, he's still charging bloody hard. We caught him towards the end of both legs. not too much on it, so you know, maybe if we race the YO every day and the YMAC every day, you definitely have a great chance of kicking our ass. You making any progress with your boat? Uh, look, uh, little gains, yep, yep, we're finding a few things here and there, so yeah, nothing, nothing dramatic, but yeah, you know, we'll, we'll get there, so. Still a long way to go, we're still only really day two into, you know, 1000k, so um, yeah, so no, plenty of racing to do, so you know, we're happy that we're slowly moving forward rather than backwards. Justin Hill wasn't complaining, he'd had a great day and was home clean, although it was close. How's your day been? Good, a yeah, really yeah. good day. Yeah. Until about oh, 200 metres upstream, that last rapid coming down. It'll be an interesting moment, probably one of the best uh, airborne moments I've had in a long time. Just that last rapid, we just sort of uh, come in a little bit um, left, a bit late, and um, had a greenie, and uh, she was airborne. I thought she was all over. CX841 had the best display upstream in the same rapid. Yeah, it didn't feel that bad, but yeah, I didn't really want it to go quite so high. <laughs> no, but we, we were, I knew we were pretty right, I knew she'd come right, but luckily it did. <laughs> Dave Robinson was showing a clean pair of heels to the CX boys all day. Already fast, he found even more speed overnight with constant tweaking to the jet pump. Oh, we changed a few things last night. We got another, say, pretty 5k out of it, I think. Yeah, so we took the loader bar in it and we're away. We're humming now, so. Pretty happy with where we're at. That's not exactly what the others wanted to hear and certainly didn't help them work out a plan of attack. Not really sure what we do about triple six. He's sort of having a game of his own. Um, yeah, he's got the boat going good and he can obviously pedal very hard. 
Um, so no, we're just going to just have to see how the week pans out really, just focus on what we're doing. Foster was also focused on watching his tail. Andrew Scott was just 12 seconds behind at the beginning of the day. Foster extended the lead over the four legs, helped when Scott was stopped on the side of the river. Something that delighted Riley Smith. Oh, we, we just pushed him off the river. <laughs> One way to get past him, so um, no, we just saw him. He was still idling, just on the bank, gave us the thumbs up and we just kept going. So, pretty good for us. But even with a penalty time for being towed in, Andrew Scott would hold third place, so long as the engine issue wasn't terminal. Navigating the grey was tricky enough, rain didn't help matters early on. Greg Wilson realising too late he should have turned around. That was Craig Robinson's good fortune and a path he wasn't going to follow. Although a little later in the day, he got a little mismothered himself. Valuable lessons today for our rookie, Jan Case Kirpenstein. Just a touch wide on a downstream corner, and you soon discover how the power of water can influence your boat. No harm done, and the experienced coast to coast kayaker consolidating his experience in white water from a different perspective. Despite the good restart by Golden Homes this morning, Tom Kelly had been worried about a vibration in the gearbox he felt while trailering. Advice on hand was pretty clear. It shouldn't be run before being checked. Once again, Golden Homes was forced to the sideline, this time more permanently. For everyone else, regroup happens for day four on the Taramakau River. And considering the river flow, that will be a test for even the best. This one has dropped about a foot since we are pre boated it, so. I'm assuming that the, the other one's gone down probably the same, so it's going to be a real challenge tomorrow. Concerns over the low level of the Taramakau River didn't stop the fourth day of competition from going ahead. Same went for the weather. Forecast rain gave way to blue skies, providing a perfect platform to race. Still, there was trepidation throughout the field. Very challenging, yeah. It's, um, it's always a tough river. There's big rocks, big boulders. We came down the pleasure boat in a bad, bad place where we shouldn't be, and definitely wouldn't want to do that in a race boat. So, a lot of tight corners, after coming down soon, and the river's quite low. So, yeah, it would definitely be a challenge. So, I would uh, imagine most people would be pretty happy just to start and finish the leaves today and, and, um, and get, get off the river safely. Yeah, it's looking pretty good, actually. It's good colour. Just bit the sun um, and just watch out that top section. It's a very busy river, I'd say, in my opinion. It's a, there won't be a lot of gain made today. I think everybody's going to be very cautious of it because we'll do a lot of damage and the boys don't want to be working on the boat tomorrow. <laughs> Mike Pooley led off upstream on the first of four 40 kilometre legs. There would be no heroics on this river. As you'd expect, Pooley and Kevin Hyde were fast and smooth beating Roger and Ben Preston on the upstream leg. But neither were quickest. Things were starting to go right for John Derry, and he was finding speed in NZ1. It was his time that topped the leaderboard. The only driver to break 15 minutes. With the gas turbines finding their level, fastest piston driver, Justin Hill, was now firmly holding on to fourth. Dave Robinson's extra 5Ks he'd found was being put to good use, just three seconds slower than Hill downstream. Richie Foster held on to second spot in CX in 185, but couldn't match the superior speed of Robinson's 666. There was a moment midway through the day when Foster's heart rate lifted as spanners were being chucked around in the back of his boat. What's going on? Uh, no, we're all good. We just started at a couple of funnies at the top, clonking away, so we're just checking wiring and that we haven't lost a tooth or anything like that. Um, hasn't faulted again since, so just try to fault find and make sure there's nothing going on there. 
The man from Cave, who lost the electrics in CX44 yesterday, was philosophical about his position. Uh, yeah, unfortunately the brushes on the alternator that was in the back there are broken, so just, yeah, simple, stupid chip as usual. Yeah, I agree. Quick fix though, so we're back going again, hopefully. Yeah, keep chasing. Having missed his penalty cut-off time by mere seconds, he was now out of overall contention. Andrew Scott, though, was still third in class. That did elevate Riley Smith in outright terms, but he was lucky to hold on when a problem on the start line threatened to derail his campaign. The race boat wouldn't get up on the plane, and nav man Zane Rich was forced onto the deck to help get them up on step. The wasted time meant next boat Grant Perry was right on their tail. And it wasn't help that Deal's Racing was now down on seven cylinders. the turnaround at the top, they discovered the cause, a melted plug lead, which was replaced from a spear carried by Andrew Scott. Thank goodness for sportsmanship. You want a one or an eight? <laughs> Probably the eight. Despite concerns about the chutes and tight turns, most made a good fist of the run downstream. But Greg Wilson missed one crucial chute. Mr. Shoot and came down the hard way over a bit of a bank. And we probably got to be a bit of a fright though when we got to the end, it was probably a bigger drop than we thought it was going to be. So. But yeah, we survived. Won't do that again on the next run? No, hopefully not. No, it wasn't much fun. With rain threatening later in the afternoon, the start of the repeat runs was brought forward to help make the most of the sunny West Coast weather. Mike Pooley was quickest this time, with the Prestons just 10 behind. Everyone made it to the top, but things were coming loose in hunting and fishing, and the engine was threatening to part company with the boat. Oh, broken engine out there. We hit really hard at the top on the way down, so I'd say we've been all the way down, and up with probably a broken engine out. We're talking about dropping it down and position. Oh, yeah. yeah, I can't go on to the some hasty repairs with a couple of tie-downs secured the engine in place for the run home. There was a nervous moment in Freedom Pools on departure when the turbine failed to fire. The second attempt was successful and Mike Pooley led off downstream for the final time of the day. Roger Preston was hot on his heels, carving into the one-minute lead Pooley had at the start and in the process clinched his second downstream win for the day. With that, he and Ben halved Pauly's outright lead to just 18 seconds. It was an orderly procession for the rest of the field. John Derry was next home, with Justin Hill behind him. Fifth was fastest CX driver Dave Robinson, reflecting seeding perfectly as was Richie Foster in sixth. The exception to the finishing order was Andrew Scott, who despite being seventh fastest and seventh to the line on day four, surrendered seventh outright to Riley Smith. Who will be well pleased to get back to his home rivers on the East Coast. Final word goes to FX driver Greg Wilson. Remember his comment about crashing over the shingle bar earlier in the day? Won't do that again on the next run? No, hopefully not. No, it wasn't much fun. Let's let the pictures tell the rest of the story. It's a lay day tomorrow, so plenty of time for Greg Wilson and his crew to check the bottom of the boat while others will be pre-running the rivers set down for the final three days of the Golden Homes New Zealand Jet Boat Marathon. After a day off from racing, teams were presented with two rivers for the sixth day of the Golden Homes Jet Boat Marathon. 
but with a twist. First, up the Rakaia River to the Gorge Bridge, then across to Springfield and down the Waimakariri to the main road bridge in Christchurch. In all, 170 kilometres of competition. High winds greeted teams at Rakaia Lagoon for the opening leg. The fastest boats would be taking special care. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a challenge getting the first four or five k probably. I think talked to Grant Perry, he said it's nothing at his place and nothing at the bridge. So, no, that's going to be a bit of a challenge today, like it always is. Mike Pooley's enthusiasm to get going cost him valuable seconds after overspinning the jet pump getting on the plane. It didn't make much difference though, he was still quickest to the gorge bridge. Roger Preston started with an 18 second deficit outright, but that got widened when he took the scenic route to the top. John Derry took the advantage and snuck on past, second to the top, with the Prestons in tow. We missed a turn to the, we went too far to the right coming up and it just took us right over to the, almost the little Rakaia and we were there for just 15 k's, like we are lucky to get out of it in fact. Preston's detour also let the fastest piston boat beat him by 45 seconds. Justin Hill had A-class aftershock racing flying over the upstream course, although he'd had a lucky break as they were about to launch the boat. It's just broken on the bottom, we had a split along the side there, just, we run quite a lot of trim down so it gets the odd hit, um, unfortunately we didn't find it yesterday and uh, 20 minutes before start time we noticed that there was a good crack in it, so mm. it's uh, not something you want to risk, no. um, worth changing, so luckily Andrew Scott had a nozzle and later we found out that was Lee's our class sponsor, so thanks Lee, really appreciate that. On his home river, Richie Foster put pressure on CX leader Dave Robinson, passing him to log a 1 minute 10 advantage at the finish. Um, in front of us here for a bit so we managed to pull him in and yeah we just stuck to what we were doing and things have gone clean today so we'll see what happens this afternoon. Robinson had been prepared to give time on this river and was happy to be safely at the top. No, Richie had a good run, that's his home river so yeah he's fine and we just stuck him behind him afterwards. So. Right. so was there any issue for you or were you just being cautious? Uh, cautious but I did touch a rock and it has hit the grill so but I haven't noticed too much difference. Craig Robinson also knew the other local Grant Perry would be quick on the Rakaia, so when the time came, he found room to let the faster boat through. Well, Grant's got a boat going really well at the moment, and we knew he'd be quicker than us on his home river, so yeah, uh, he caught us above the bridge a bit, and um, Liam said he was coming, so we took a sort of a channel out to the right, and um, he went through on one on the left of us, it was a little bit straighter, and clean pass, it all worked out quite well, and then we managed to pretty much stay in touch with him and he sort of led us up the river which was pretty handy really, not, not that it was extremely difficult but yeah, it's good. You good trusted to have a him? Local. Yeah, good to have a local, a couple of wee shortcuts and he took us on and um, yeah, that was all good. We had hoped to get word from Grant but he was busy preparing for the downstream leg. He wasn't the only one, CX185 navigator Brent Miller was running leg 14 through his mind at the midday turnaround. For possibly the first time ever, the Waimakariri was being raced downstream first, and this time from Springfield Adventure Park, adding in an extra 15 kilometres. Pooley was away first, fast and clean. The Prestons were fast too, but not so clean. Setting the tone for their run to the bottom. There was more to come, but before the Gorge Bridge, Wayne Boys found one of his famous channels which didn't end as well as he'd hoped. He and Mark Moore would make the Main Road Bridge, but their day was longer than they'd hoped. 
Richie Foster was itching to get going, jumping the start line by a second, in the process losing the entire minute he'd just pulled on Dave Robinson in penalties. He would otherwise have beaten Robinson by two seconds, highlighting just how close they were. Our rookie, Jan Case Kerpenstein, must have missed the warning at briefing to keep left after the Gorge Bridge and took a ride on the wild side through the rock garden. But he made it to the bottom and extended his river racing learning curve even more. Back up front, Pauly was easing back the pace, having nailed a couple of important shortcuts. Through the tricky section around the pylons, he took it easy. Maybe too easy. No, I was supposed to go straight down and I missed my channel. I had a bit of brain fade. So it's a marathon and I'm not quite sure what we've lost, but we'll, we've, if it's not too much, we can make it up properly. You know? John Derry slipped on by to record the fastest downstream time. This moment would hand the lead to the defending champion, with Pooley parked up and Preston continuing to take scenic excursions. Although there was nothing scenic about this one. Importantly though, he did make it to the bottom with time to contemplate his day. We've had a hell of a day today. The Rakai, we, we kind of um, went away out on the scenic tour and that. And at the start of the WiMAC, about I don't know, 5k down, we went too fast around the corner and we didn't make it to the huge overlander. Um, and then we just didn't quite get our head back in the game the rest of the way. Once again, Justin Hill's time was quicker than Preston's. The A class pilot has a way with this river, and today he showed that for sure. With push poles out, Kevin Hyde and Mike Pooley soon had Freedom Pools back in the deep and made the finish, but with an added seven minutes to their time. That landing them squarely in third with a lot of work to do. The antics weren't over. Riley Smith was on a blinder. The rooster tail of Andrew Scott was firmly in his sights and he had the bit between his teeth. Straight lining the mighty Wymac taking no heed of the gravel. It eventually paid off, and a surprised Andrew Scott was moved sideways to let the Deals Racing steam train roll on through. I didn't see him coming. <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously, yep, made it past, no drummer, and yeah, there wasn't much room over that bar where we both went through, so I'd say our wings might have a scrape mark on them, but that's cool. <laughs> Very much the untidiest run I've ever done that there. Understandably, Riley Smith was pretty stoked with his day. Good run. We took it easy up the top, got around the top corner, and then we caught Andrew, and he must have had an issue, so we took an inside shoot and got right in behind him, and from there on we just couldn't get past him, and every shit channel he took, we took. And there were channels with no water coming out the back of his unit and, and we were just hopping over rocks with great fun. Got him just above the, where the circuit race was. Racing continues for day seven on the Rakaia River, this time upstream and down. Day seven had teams back at Rakaia Huts in front of race controller Tony Ewans for a second time on the Rakaia, this time up and down the same river. Now in third after yesterday's grounding, Mike Pooley was hopeful of a good performance to bring him back into outright contention. So well, you've got to get past Roger if you're going to you know, try and track down John at all. Yeah, well, it, different routes in the river, so we <laughs> hope to take the right one and he'll go out somewhere else. So. On paper, it was possible, but it would mean a good performance in the four remaining legs. John Derry was also conscious of just how quickly things can change in a day, taking nothing for granted. Yeah, I think I said yesterday we've still got a long way to go, we've still got three big days and we've still got two big days, so um, mm. as we saw yesterday, a couple of guys had problems. So It's yep. pretty easy for us to do the same thing today or tomorrow, so um, yeah, we'll uh, push hard, but hopefully um, the yeah, consistency where we end up. Derry led off with Preston and Pooley slotting in at one minute intervals behind him. For Pooley, the task of reducing the four and a half minute deficit meant getting as close to the race leader as he could.
Roger Preston was keen to close the gap as well and finding what he thought was a better track did just that. We had a great run up, we took one different channel than John, um, which we were catching him but then he, he, must, he went out to the right and we went straight up the middle and, and we come out behind him. So, um, But then after that it was just sort of follow suit. John's detour out to the right looked to have taken longer. But John's gas turbine had flamed out, momentarily losing power and valuable time too. Perhaps contributing to the super close finish after 85 kilometres of racing. Mike Pooley was more than satisfied with his morning's work. In third, right on the tail of the two leaders, indicating he'd eaten up more than one and a half minutes of deficit. The run up, we managed to haul both of them in, so looking forward to the, the run down this afternoon. It's going to, I love it. This route was really good, and it's in good condition, good colour, so it allows you to push a bit harder. So we'll be pushing hard this afternoon to get down. Once again, in CX, Richie Foster was pedal to the metal gobbling up the one minute advantage to class leader Dave Robinson by the end of the leg. Riley Smith was much more sedate after yesterday's daring display of driving, but quite ready to do it again should the temptation appear before him on the downstream leg. Craig Robinson couldn't hold off Grant Perry for a second day on the same river. Clearly the work on Perry's race boat was paying dividends. Jason Young and Ross Court did a lot, got it sitting up a lot better. Though I have bent it up a bit, it's not quite so pretty under there now. But <laughs> still flowing a lot better than it was. Yeah, it's going about as fast as I can handle now anyway. With few issues on the upstream leg, save our rookie who'd once again gone AWOL, the decision was made to restart the downstream leg early. Lunch was a quick, casual affair on the riverside and teams were back into it. This time Richie Foster got the better of Dave Robinson making the pass just before the run up the lagoon. Yeah, he caught us just below the bridge, but yeah, we went on a goat track somewhere, so, oh well. We were expecting him to catch us, so. But you didn't expect to go into a goat track? No, no. We hadn't actually pre-boated down, so we, we're happy to get down. A reseat at lunch put Craig Robinson behind Grant Perry to avoid a repeat pass downstream but the Robinson father-son duo had their hands full themselves just above the main road bridge. Perry, well, he had his own issues too. Our fastest piston boat was sitting comfortably in fourth outright. Keeping his nose clean was the objective of Justin Hill, but somehow in a race boat, that's just too hard to do. But things were about to get a whole lot better for Justin Hill. The day had been looking otherwise uneventful by comparison to the downstream Waimakariri, but all that changed when Mike Pooley was putting pressure on Roger Preston. Having eaten up yet another minute of disadvantage, things started to get untidy in the Preston's wake. And in a touch of gravel, some air, and suddenly the tables, like the boat, were turned. Mike Pooley and Kevin Hyde were high and dry, and this time there would be no pushing Freedom Pools back to the water. Not far away, John Derry was trying to get out of trouble himself. He and Nick Smith had taken a channel to the left further back upstream, leaving Roger Preston to the main channel. It didn't pay off. In 
a nutshell, what happened? Lack of talent. Yes, Navigator's fault. Stars. Whoever's at fault, we have another outright lead change. Roger and Ben Preston first to cross the line today and with every minute ticking by, providing a bigger barrier between themselves and their first New Zealand title. Couldn't believe it. John was away out to the left, yeah. too far out to the left. We were down down the middle and, and um, he was high and dry. You didn't give him any of your tourist maps you've been using from the last day? No, he wasn't quite out that far, but uh, <laughs> he was close. With zero oil pressure on arrival, they were relieved to find out it just needed to be topped up. Something they'll be watching tomorrow as they race up and down the Waimakariri River to complete the Golden Homes New Zealand Marathon for 2022. Both John Derry and Mike Pooley would not start the final day of the Golden Homes New Zealand Marathon for 2022, leaving Roger Preston to worry about nothing more than getting up and down the Waimakariri. A lot of pressure just to start and finish today mm. and, and um, it's the hardest river of the marathon to do that on, so um, certainly got to keep the head in the game, not go too fast and not go too slow. It would take a grounding or mechanical failure to let hard charging Justin Hill through in NZ2. The fastest piston and A-class driver was also looking for a clean run. Local knowledge on this river is always an advantage and Hill found himself taking a shorter line coming out in front of the gas turbine. That was the plan, if not a blessing, for Roger Preston. <laughs> that was all part of the game plan, Paul. Uh, he knows his river really well. Um, he, he took a channel up the middle when we were on the left bank coming up after the pylons yep. and um, it was obviously a shortcut because he came out in front of us and just right in front of us. So we thought, well, why don't we just follow him? For anyone not from Canterbury, the Waimakariri can be daunting and the low flow today was piling on the pressure. A bit about survival mode today? It was, but then again we crossed 30 metres of gravel and lucky to survive. There mightn't have been a breeze at the bottom of the river, but by midway the warm northwest wind was greeting race teams. Run OK? You know, uh, pretty tidy. A lot better than the downstream run down here the other day anyway, but yeah, just uh, she let go pretty good when we hit the northwester on the way up, but uh, aside from that, great fun. Yeah. Pulling jet pumps apart between legs is commonplace, so naturally no chances were being taken by the support crew of NZ2 for the final leg of the week. What are you doing when you're pulling this apart? Oh, I just check in the impeller, uh, making sure there's no cracks, um, check the grill, what we can see from the top. Um, yeah, just looking for any issues, potential issues. So. Which is all good, so looks alright. Yep, good to go back down. The hive of activity in 367 wasn't with the jet pump though. Frantic efforts were being made to work uh, on the gas turbine. The turbine is locked up, it won't go around for so just going to take the starter off and see if we can turn the, the, um, the gear at the front so we can get it to see if we can turn it over so we can get it fired up. Few nervous moments. <laughs> what was that all about? I don't know. It, it was luck solid that we've managed to get some vice grips on the front and turn it back and forth, back and forth a wee bit more until we got it sort of free and I put the starter back on and and it started. So. Hopefully, there would be one more start to complete the most important leg of this race boat's life. Unlimited 367 did just that, and come 1 p.m. she fired into life for a final run home watched on by the crew of NZ2, starting one minute behind. Downstream at the finish line, current NZ1 champ, John Derry was excited at the prospect of Roger collecting his first New Zealand title and philosophical about his own bad luck on the Rakaia. Oh, look, we just took a wrong channel. Simple as that, you know, we had to push pretty hard. We've been down on power all week and, and, um, and the boat hasn't been going that great, to be honest, so we've had to push pretty hard to uh, keep in contact and we've just pushed, we just pushed too hard, simple as that. 
today. You've got Preston uh, sitting there. Everybody, I guess, including you, you got your fingers crossed for, for Roger? Yeah, look, Roger's been campaigning for many, many years and he's never won that title. So, you know, uh, hopefully he can get the thing across the finish line. We rushed up with a starter motor to the top to him to try and get him going and uh, he managed to get, get, get the thing fixed. So, uh, yeah, he'll be a very happy man. Preston slowed to let Hill show the way and followed the local home. Even Justin Hill was willing on a win for the Prestons. Within sight of the finish line though, Justin Hill slowed, tipped his hat and let the outright winner take the glory of line honours to everyone's approval. So unlimited and outright first to Roger and Ben Preston. How do you feel? <laughs> Congratulations. Relieved. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Relieved. It's been a long time coming, hasn't it? Oh, very long time. Yeah. 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 So pleased to get down. Yeah. I've got to thank Justin for showing us the way. You tucked him behind him again? Yeah. Yeah. And then he let us pass just up here. Oh, really? Real sportsmanship. Second outright and first A-class for the second year in a row, Justin Hill and Josh Hamilton. And completing the trifecta, third outright and first in CX, again for the second year in a row, Dave Robinson and Kirk Thompson. Massive week, yeah, I'm absolutely exhausted. Going to bed about 8.30, I've never done that before, so I'm glad it's done, mate. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long week. It might have been a small field, but it was a quality field that took advantage of the glorious weather and ideal river conditions for racing the Golden Homes New Zealand Jet Boat Marathon for 2022. Hey, that was a big call. Well done to you, but uh, that, was a, that was a great call for you. Oh, definitely. They deserve it 100%. We saw them uh, follow us down most of the way, so last couple of days there we just came off the gas and let them boat down and get on on us. They deserve it 100%. Roll on the world's next year.